way. Amen. We all need to know what to do in those situations, right? Yes, ma'am. We all need to know what to do in God's Word, God's will, and God's way. We're going to be talking tonight about God's Word, God's will, and God's way. All three of them have to have the green light in order to go to the next step in God's movie. All three of them have to have the green light. The wisdom of following the three W's, and I'm passing out because I want, I want this. You need to keep this with you at all times. Because I'm telling you what, if you follow this, this will get you to the next step and the next level because it doesn't allow you to stumble and fall. And you'll see this once, I, once you get all three green lights, you're going to go full forward to God's promises. I'm telling you. Um, the wisdom of following the three W's for determining God's word on a matter. His specific will concerning it and his way to fulfill it is the most accurate method of making sure you do everything in harmony with heaven. Do everything in harmony with heaven. We have to have God's word or his word so we can know what to do in situations. There's too many times we get out there and, and we, we think we have the green light. We think we have the green light. Oh, I got one word. Yes, go, God. And we take off and we end up failing and, and stumbling because we haven't had the will and the way laid out for us. We had a word, but we don't have the will. How, God, how are you going to do this? Is this God's will or is it Tammy's will? Right? How many times have we done that? God, I had a word from you. And I think it's your will, but really it's, it's my will. It's really my will because it's really, you tell me you're going to give me the desires of my heart, right, God? But is it God's timing? Has He prepared the way for you so you can succeed, so you can reach that end victory? So if you have a red light in, in God's Word, it says, you need to stop right there. Do not proceed any further until the light turns, turns, the green light comes on. Okay? Don't go any further. And I'm going to go, I'm going to read this first, and then I'll give you some ways of how to get God's Word, God's will, and God's way. I'm going to read this first, and then that'll, I'll come back to this several times. Because if we go when it's red, look what happens. Red means... It's the blood atonement. It's the sacrifice of Christ's blood. It's the covering of grace. It's a cleansing time for us. We're not ready to go to that next step in God's uh, word or, or His will. We're not ready to go to the will yet because God's still cleansing us, Father. He's protecting us. The blood of Jesus protects us. The blood of Jesus protects us. So we don't want to get ahead of God. It's, it's, it talks about judgment and death and life. and It's redemption. It's a consuming fire which refers to our flesh. God is refining us. He doesn't give us the green light because He's still on red. He still has to do some refining in you. If you're, if you're stuck in a, in a situation, God, show me what I need to do to get refined. God will show you. He'll show you. That's why He hasn't given you the, the green light yet. He'll show you. If you're stuck in a job that you don't, you're not happy at, ask God to show you what's going on so He can give you the green light to move you out into what He has in store for you for that promotion. Maybe He's still doing some a little bit more refining. So don't get ahead of God. Yellow light. Man, how many times we come up on a yellow light and we want to speed up? And I'm talking in the natural. <laughs> I'm talking in the natural now. Right? We get to the, oh man, I am in a hurry, God. I am going to be late for my appointment. I better speed up and go right through that yellow light. God's protecting us, though. <laughs> Slow down. Prepare to stop. It's time to take caution. It's not a yes or a no. It's not the green light yet. But we have to wait and see what, what, what God is saying. Whether to go, yes, or whether yes for green or no for go. Or for red. We have to listen. That's why it's so important when it's and when God puts the yellow light on, he's like, slow down. Slow down. Wait. Let me let me do some more refining. Let me open the path in front of you first. 
So you, so you have a clean path. So you don't get stumbled along the way. I let God do the work and not and don't take it into your own hands. Right. Don't take it into your own hands. Let him turn it over to him. When he gives you that caution, I need you to slow down here. Step back here. You're going a little too fast. Let God take care of it so he can give you that green light to go. So you won't stumble. You won't he won't you won't have a stumbling block in front of you. Okay? Clean the path. Thank you. Green, boy, it's time to go. It is time to proceed on at the proper speed God approves us. Don't go too fast. You know, we have a speed zone, a speed limit for a reason, right? We don't want to get a ticket. Don't go, don't get, go too fast, okay? Stay in tune. Listen clearly to the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. When He gives you the green light, it's time to move on to that next job. It's time to uh, sell your house and stuff like that. Listen closely to what the Holy Spirit is telling you. So you proceed at the speed that God has laid in front of you. It is, it is the mind and timing of the Lord. So finalize the decision and take immediate action. This is the time not to wait. When God opens every door possible, I'm telling you, He's, he's made the path. He's cleared the path for you. He's got rid of all the stumbling blocks. Now is the time to not question God. It's time to put your total faith in what God has in store for you. Don't slow down. Don't take caution. Don't stop. Go forward and trust that God is doing it for you. He's opened it. He's given you the green light for a reason. He's given you the green light for a reason because, and this is exciting, when He gives you the green light, it's time to praise. Yes. It's time to, He's giving you life. He's giving you vigor. He's giving you the prosperity. He's giving you the mercy. He's giving you the restoration. He's giving you the health, the healing. He's giving you a new beginning. Yes. How many of us need a new beginning? Yes. Woo! He's giving you some freshness, that fresh oil of God. God's holy seed and harvest. It's time for the sowing and reaping to come to pass. Yes, come on. It's time for the sowing and reaping to come to pass. The fresh oil, the new life, and the joy and hope. Yes. Grab a hold of it and don't stop. Don't take caution. Don't stop. Just keep going at God's speed. Because He's opening the door. He's giving you the green light. This is basic stuff, but I'm telling you, if you follow God's word, God's will and God's way, He's not going to let you fall. That's right. He will not let you fall. He's not going to let you stumble because He loves each and every one of you. He loves you. And He loves you with that grace that we all need to love each other with. Yes. The grace that we need to love each other with. It doesn't matter what we did in the past. It's already under the blood. That's why you're, you've been at the stop sign for so long. God's put it under the blood. It's already done. It's already a done deal. He's already done the refining, so it's time to move on. So how do we how do we do how do we get in God's word? The Bible is the highest authority. The highest authority. And is the revelation of God in written form. It's God's desires, his thoughts, his intents, and his purposes. It's revealed and written. For all of us to read and understand. So if you're reading King James and you don't understand it, I'd suggest getting rid of it. And getting the NIV or some New Living Standard or something. I'm telling you, if you don't understand what you're reading, get another Bible. Because there's plenty to choose from. Those these and those and kind of that, those kind of stumble you up, trip you up sometimes. So if you don't understand what you're reading, get even the message is wonderful. That's that's a story. That's just like reading a story between you and God. Get the Message Bible. That's a basic way, place to start to really build that relationship between you and God. So get, get you a Bible that you understand. So when you're studying it out, when you're getting in God's Word, it makes sense to you. Right? right? So in order to receive a green light to go on to God's will, we can't just go by one Scripture. We have to have more than one Scripture. Right. Two or more, right? We have to have more than one. We can't say, okay, well, God, you said do this. Your word say, let's say it the Lord. You've got to have confirmation by one or two. I mean, two or more. Two or more. 
to have that confirmation. Because too many times we take one word out of God's word, one, one scripture out of God's word, and we run with it. We run with it, and it's not His way, and it's not His will. So it's so important that we have two or more scriptures to back up what God's put in our hearts. Okay? He gives you the desires of our hearts. The Holy Spirit will not give you anything contrary to the Word of God. That's right. The Holy Spirit will not give you anything contrary to the Word of God. It's very important. That's why each and every one of you, I want to, this wasn't planned, but I want everybody to bow their head right now. Thank for just, go, everybody go quiet for us one minute. Pastor Shannon, what did you hear? One word. Mountains. Jenny, what did you hear? Uh, Pastor. Melissa. Peace. Well, what did you hear? Double portion? But what did you hear? Everybody can hear from God. Yeah. Just like that. Go silent. Everybody can hear from God. Just silence before God. Take silence. Get all the noise away from you because the Holy Spirit wants to talk to you. One word. And that's for you. The that's word right. you got is for you. That's right. It's not for the person sitting next to you. It's for you personally. So I encourage you, get alone. Spend some time. It doesn't take much. We weren't even 30 seconds. Yeah. And you heard from God. <coughs> it doesn't take a prophet. It doesn't take Pastor. It doesn't take Tammy. It doesn't take Pastor Shannon for you to hear from God. Amen. Every one of you heard from God. Every one of you got a word. And that word was for you. Study and meditate upon the word. Get in the Word. Seek God's face. Psalms 1, 2-3 says, delight, but, but, but His delight is in the law of the Lord. And all, on His law He meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Study. Meditate. You get in God's Word, you're going to flourish. You're going to be nourished. You're going to, all that, God's Word is all that water that pouring over you, that seeds into your life, that overtakes all the darkness, overtakes all the negative things going around you. Because when you get in those situations, that's what's going to come out. It's the Word of God. Meditate day and night on the Word of God. Don't listen to the doctor's reports. Don't listen to your jobs what they're saying and it's negative. Don't listen to the people around you. Meditate day and night on the Word of God. Yes. And that's what's going to come out of your mouth, out of the abundance of the heart that now speaks. Jesus. So the more you pour in the Word of God, that's what's going to come out of your heart. Yes. So if, you're, if, you're, if you catch yourself speaking negatively, you've got to pour more Word. You've got to get it all flushed out. And it's a daily flushing. I'm telling you, it's a daily flushing. Nobody's perfect. It's a daily flushing. That's right, flush it. <laughs> I like it. Flush it out. More ways than one, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So meditate. And, and then the next one is dear to my heart. And that's pray. The church is built on the foundation of prayer. Nothing happens without prayer, people. Nothing happens without prayer. We have to speak it out of our mouth in order for God to do it. He said He'd do it, but He wants to hear it from us. From us. Yes. we got to speak it forth. I want my healing. I want my prosperity. I want my, I, I want my promotion. I want my debts to be canceled. Because that all lines up with His Word. Speak it out of our mouth. It's God's will. Speak God's Word a will out of our mouth, and that will come to pass. Pray. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Because this is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Did you hear that? If we ask 
anything according to God's will, He hears us. That's why it's so important to pray. It doesn't have to be a long, lengthy prayer. All it can be is all we've been saying here lately in intercessory prayer is one word, one, one word, God, and we grab it. That's all it takes is one word. I need joy. I need hope. I need freedom. One word is all it takes. It doesn't have to be this long, lengthy prayer. One word is all it takes. So when we're approaching God, uh, in verse 15 says that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And, and if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of Him. So the more you pray, the more confidence you get, the more excitement you get, and that the more knowing that you know what you just said that lines up with the Word of God, God will give it to you in His Word, in His will, and in God's way. Not in Timmy's Word, Timmy's will, Timmy's way. It ain't going to work that way. It's got to be God's Word. It's got to be God's will. It's got to be God's way. He will make it. He will make it. He will line it up. So, first of all, get God's word. Seek God's word. Uh, the whole, seek the Holy Spirit. Study and meditate on His word each and every day. Pray. Pray on the way. My most, my most time I pray is on my way to work, to and from work. That's my quiet time. I am telling you, that is that is the time. Just take the time to pray. Turn off the radio. Turn that radio off. Get quiet, and that's when God's going to talk to you too. In that still quiet moment, just you and him. And then when somebody cuts you off, then you Praise you can him. respond in the correct way. Praise God, bless the Lord. Oh. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Woo. If you're in the middle of praying, you, it works every time. Because if I wouldn't have been, I right. might have said a few other things. Right. I'm telling you. Because <laughs> we are human. Yeah, most of us. Yeah, most of us. Okay, God's will. So we've got to have a green light to get through God's word. So we have to do it by having more than one scripture. We have to listen to the Holy Spirit. We have to study and med meditate on the word. And we have to pray. Pray each and every day. So God's will. How do we determine God's will? Divinely directed desires. Because he says in Psalms 37, 4, Delight in yourself in the Lord. And He will give you the de desires of your heart. So you got to have the Word. Now He's going to give you the way. He's going to give you the way. Or the will. So He's going to give you the desires of your heart. Tell God what your desires are. Tell Him. He wants to hear it. He wants to hear what your desires are. Because He wants to bless you. You, you are His children. You are His children. And He's, he's a daddy just waiting to pour out blessings. He's got all, I can see it now, all these blessings and all these packages. He's just waiting for us to ask. They're waiting. They're still all around the throne room. And Jesus, come on, tell them to do Say something to me. Speak to me. God's just wanting you to ask. He's got all the presents ready for you. They're all packaged up. Beautiful. Just the way you like it. He's ready to give it to you. So he's going to give you the desires of your heart. And as you're studying the Word, he's going to illustrate, illuminate the Rhema Scripture Word in the Word. He will, Romans 8, 16 says, The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. When you're reading the Word of God, a Rhema Word is something that just pops out and touches your heart right then when you read it. It is a word for you. It is a word for you. It is going to speak to you right then. Grab a hold of it. Grab a hold of it and start confessing it over your life. God's going to show you in this. I have so many highlighted scriptures and words in my Bible. It's not even funny. And it's the words that spoke to me. And it's okay to write your Bible and highlight. It's okay. Some people don't like to, but I, I do. So, God's going to re reveal it through His reign of word and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Boy, these are sometimes difficult. Galatians 5.22, the 
But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, <laughs> kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. So, determine God's will by the fruit of the Spirit. Sometimes that's one of the most difficult things to do, to wait on God's will. I've been waiting. I've been waiting, God. I'm getting, patient. I'm getting very impatient here, God. I've been waiting. Then He kindly reminds, reminds you, if i got to do some more pruning. i got to clean your heart out. i got to get you ready to receive my blessing. Okay? Because He doesn't want you to fail. He doesn't want to give it to you before, before it's your time. Because if, if God gives you... Too many times you've heard people that have won the lottery and they're broke within a year. Mm -hmm. They weren't ready for God's blessing. They were not ready. They squandered it and they were broke just as much or more than they were a year before. Oh, yeah. So God has to prepare you to receive His blessings. So there's a reason. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. He will give you wisdom. First Corinthians 12. He'll give you wisdom. He'll give you the knowledge. He'll give you the healing. Miraculous powers. Prophecy. Tongues. Interpretation of tongues. Different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. So He's going to give you the Holy Spirit. He's going to speak through you through different ways. Through prophecy. Through wisdom. Through going quiet. And the Holy Spirit just spoke to each and every one of you. Then He's going to give you the clearance to His will. The clearance um, in Acts uh, 16, 6-9. Six and I'll, I'll summarize this. Paul was kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching in Asia. The, then Paul had a vision of a man of, in, in Macedonia begging him to come over to Macedonia. So at once, Paul left for uh, Macedonia. See, God's not going to give you the clearance until he's, he, He'll give you the clearance because He might be holding you back. He's not going to give you the peace to move forward. He will stop you one way or another. He will, he will stop you so you can't move forward out of His timing. And if you try to, you're going to stumble and fall. So He's going to, he's going to protect you. He's going to protect you. He's going to give you that clearance. He's going to give you the wise counsel. Proverbs 19, 20 through 21 says, Listen to advice and accept instruction. And in the end, you will be wise. Many are the plans in a, plans in a man's heart, but, is, but it is in the Lord's purpose that prevails. So listen to a, a wise, uh, wise advice. If, if seriously, there is whatever concern or you, you want to start progressing in God, and you should need somebody to pray, for, uh, to pray with. There's plenty of people. Pastor, he's your wise counselor. Most of all, God is. First of all, God is. But if you need somebody here on earth to talk to, pastors available, there's leaders in this church that will pray with you, will help you get through whatever's going on. And it's going to be, in, I'm telling you, it's going to be in confidence because, a confidential because that is the expectations of all the intercessors. Well, whoever comes to them, the expectation is it won't go no, any, no further. It is between you and them. They'll take it to God. So you can trust in, in uh, the leadership here. And once again, confirmation by two or three witnesses. Deuteronomy 19.15 says, Listen to advice and... Ex Wrong one. One witness is not enough to convict a man accused of any crime or offense he may have com committed. A matter must be established by two or more witnesses. Once again... Two or more witnesses. Yet in order to have God's will, you have to have two or more witnesses. Have that confirmation. You don't want to go out there on your own. Unity. Unity is a big one, folks. Matthew 18, 19 through 20. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask, it will be done. For where two or three together come together in my name, there I am. So it's all about unity. We, we have been really praying about unity a lot in intercessory prayer. It's, there's power in unity, people. 
there's power. That's why it's so important that, that we're not judging one another. We're not walking in offenses. We're not, we're not uh, backbiting. We're not saying things that will make your brother fall or stumble. Yes. It is so important. There's power in unity. I can't stress that enough. Two or more. There he is. He's there. He's right there. And the last one for God's will uh, can be determined by the prophet or personal prophecy. Can be, it can confer, I will tell you, prophecy or, per, or, or a prophet will confirm only what the Holy Spirit's been telling you already. It's a confirmation. If you get a word from a prophet and it doesn't speak to your, to your uh, inner man, or you get a check in your spirit, I suggest you shelve it. <laughs> I suggest you shelve it. If you get a, if you get a per, uh, personal prophecy, I encourage you, always write it out. Always write it out. Listen to it over and over. I can't tell you enough, I, how many times I go back and read all the prophetic words I've gotten over the years, and they just line up after line up. And, and then you get in the Word and you start praying them through. If that's your desire and God said it through a prophet, then you pray it through. You pray it through. You get confirmation in the Word and say, God, you said I'm going to be a teacher. You said I'm going to the nations. Pray it through. Because if God spoke through a prophet and it speaks to your heart, it's going to come to pass. I'm telling you, it's going to come to pass. Because a prophet is only God's voice coming through. It's an audible voice coming to you. So when pastors up here prophesying, I'm telling you, take it to heart. Take it to heart. God's speaking to you. Speaking to you. Go back and listen to it again on the recordings. That's why we record things. Every place I've ever been that gives personal prophecy was recorded. That way the individual can go back and listen to it time and time again and pray, pray it through. And God will make it come to pass. It's exciting. It's an exciting time. Alright, so we got the green light on God's uh, Word. We got the green light on God's will. So here comes God's way. It's all about timing. It's all about patience. And it's all about wisdom. Yeah. Here's the big one. This is where most Christians endeavor fail because they are not done according to God's way. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways. Your ways my ways declares the Lord. What did I say about declaring? He's speaking it really loud because he wants people to get this. Our ways are not his ways. As the heavens are higher than, than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And then it's all about God's timing. Acts 3.21 says, He must remain in heaven until the time comes for God to restore everything. As He promised long ago through the Holy Prophets, Jesus. It's all about God's timing. It's, if we get out of God's timing, then everything else, all the other green lights, we might as well turn red. We might as well turn red. We get out of God's timing. We're going to fail. Can't stress that enough too. We're going to fail. So don't get out of God's timing. God's going to do it in His timing. Sometimes we, sometimes we get frustrated. And sometimes we're like, God has taken awful long. But I tell you what, His word will never come back void. It will never come back void. If you're expecting healing, God's word will never come back void. You will get that healing. You have to believe it in your heart. If you're expecting promotion, you're going to get that promotion all in God's timing. I can't tell you enough how many times I put in for manager's position after manager's position. And I mean, she's like, man, it's your timing. When is your timing going to be here? For years, for years, I interviewed for manager's positions out there, and I kept getting passed up. It wasn't until I moved to Tulsa and I interviewed a few more. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I didn't know. It was all in God's timing, all in God's timing. And when he gave it to me, I didn't even have to interview for it. <laughs> they handed it to me. Right. Right. All in God's timing. That was above and beyond what I could even imagine. But I was 
faithful and continuing to go out there and expose myself and, and get used to interviewing and kept pressing in and kept, I didn't give up. Right. I wanted to give up. I wanted to give up yes. because I was getting frustrated because I kept getting passed out because I'm like, God, that good old boy got the job again. Not very many women out there, so that good old boy got the job again. I had no idea God was going to just hand it to me. I had no idea. That's for somebody here. Somebody needs a promotion, and God's going to just give it to you. I'm telling you, God's going to just give it to you. Grab a hold of it. Whoever's wanting promotion, grab a hold of it and say, I thank you, Lord, you're just going to hand it to me. I've already prepared myself. I've already interviewed so many times. My resume's updated. I'm ready for you to give it to me. Patience and wisdom. That's, that kind of leads into what I was just talking about, though. James 1, 2 through 5. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Yeah. Got to keep pressing in. Got to keep pressing in. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Woo, I'm going to read that again. Yes, we know this one better. Yeah. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking what? Yeah. Anything. Yeah. <coughs> if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God. God will give it to you. God will give it to you. Who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. He's not going to find fault in you. So if you ask for wisdom three, four, five hundred times, it's okay. He's going to continue to give it to you. Because Solomon, look how much wisdom he had. Woo he had a lot of wisdom. Overflowing. <coughs> Rather you ask for wisdom, wisdom than not ask at all. Ask for wisdom. He'll give it to you. He's going to give you uh, divine circumstantial control. And I'll read what that's talking about there. He's going to provide guidance. John 16, 12 through 15 says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can, can you now bear. But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears, and He will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. The Holy Spirit's going to tell you. The Holy Spirit's going to tell you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. God's going to make it known to you. All you have to do is take that one minute. God, I need some wisdom here. I need some wisdom and just be quiet. And just let Him speak to you. Let Him speak to your heart. We heard it tonight. We saw it tonight. All it took was 30 seconds and people got to work. That one word could set you free. All it could take is that one word. If you're having a rough day and the enemy's coming at you, Stop and just sit down and listen to God. Listen to the Holy Spirit. He's going to encourage you. He's going to comfort you. He's going to get you through that day. Even if you have to go to the bathroom at work and lock your doors. <laughs> Sometimes you got to do that. Yes, Lord, I'm on the throne, literally. I'm going to. I'm telling you. That's a word for Melissa. I'm telling you. <laughs> Is that a word for you, Melissa? Yeah, it's <laughs> We need that, though. We need to come home and separate ourselves from the noise. And the turbulence, as I said before, from the stuff going around, sometimes we need to separate ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Just be still and be quiet and know that He's God. He's going to appoint people to you. He's going to prepare the place. And He's going to provide the provision. 
He's going to provide the provision to get you to, to His will, His word, His will, and His way. So as, if He's called you to go overseas and teach, He's going to provide you everything you need to go over there. If He's called you to go around this world or go throughout the United States and preach the word of God, He's going to provide it. Because if God said it would be done, it will be done. Right. He's going to provide everything you need. Everything you need. You're not going to like for nothing. You're not going to like. If God said it, it will come to pass. So the who, the what, the when, the where, and the how. But not the why. We'll read that again. So we, we, get, we always talk about the five... I mean the, you know, the who, what, when, where, how. We're not supposed to ask the why. But we always ask the why. It's not when it comes to God. If God's gave you green light on His word, His will, and His way, it's not our responsibility to ask the why. That's a hard word, but it's not our responsibility. If God's given you the green light, better go forward. Move. Move. Because what did it say back here? Your, your praise, your vigor, your prosperity, your mercy, your, your God's mercy, restoration, healing, new beginnings, fresh oil, new life is right there. He's giving you the green light. Move. Don't stop now. Don't ask. Too many times we want to ask the why though. I did though. I will have to. I'm, it's confession time. I asked the why, why am I moving back to Tulsa, Oklahoma? <laughs> I'll never move back to Tulsa, Oklahoma, God. Yeah, I should have asked the why. But I did. I did. But that's where I was at that time. I was coming out of the wilderness. I was coming out of the wilderness, and I didn't understand why he was moving me to Tulsa, Oklahoma coming back to a place I was really fearful of because in high school it was there were there was people that, you know, I sat behind this one girl, this is before I came out, I sat behind this one girl and the people in front of me were like, don't sit by her. I said, what? Oh, she kisses girls in the closet. That's what I got in high school in Claremore, Oklahoma. So, and I'm like, okay, I, I didn't move, but, you know, I, I was before I knew. But, uh, <laughs>
So when it's the yellow light, it's all right. It's time to slow down, take caution. Green light's not ready yet. You gotta listen to the Holy Spirit to see when the green light's ready to go. Is it time to stop or is it time to go on? And I'm telling you now, when that light turns green, go at God's speed, approved speed. Because your prosperity, your healing, your hope, your everything, your heart's <laughs> desires are there waiting, packaged up for you. Down that path, God's already laid out for you. The stumbling block blocks are already gone. They're already gone. He's already laid the path out. Don't hesitate. Don't ask why. Keep going. From this day forward, don't ask why any longer. Make a conscious effort. I'm not going to ask God why anymore because He's got my back. He's got my back. He's got my best interest at hand. Tammy doesn't have her best interest at hand, but God's got my best interest at hand. He's got your best interest, your margarita, at his hand. He's already got it there. It's laid out. He's ready for it. Be obedient to his word. Be obedient to his will. And be obedient and walk down his way. Walk down that path that's already laid out. Because Moses, he had God's word. He delivered three, over three million people out of bondage and took them to the promised land that God prophesied would be Abraham's seed. He had God's will. It was made known by the voice of God and confirmed by signs and wonders and miracles. He had the way. He had two years in the wilderness routed instead of 11 days paid by Canaan. He had the provision, miracles and manna. He had the guidance, cloud by day and fire by night. He had the patience to wait until Pharaoh said, let, let him go. And he had the people to procure and possess. Children of Israel and Abraham's seed. Yes. And he had the timing. He kept moving toward Canaan until God put everything in order by establishing a tabernacle for his presence, a law for a proper practice and organizing to 12 tribes opportunity for warfare experience, then when the challenge comes, go in at once and possess by faith. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. If Moses can do it oh. and save that many people, you can save yourself. Amen. You can save yourself. And you can save everybody else around you. You can save everybody else around you. So I encourage you tonight, Take caution, get the word, the will, and the way lined up. I printed that for everybody to have because I th I, it's so dear to my heart because if you follow it, I'm telling you, it lines up everything for your life. It lines it all up. He's going to provide it. He's going to provide the provision. He's going to provide the way. And everybody's ready for a miracle from God, right? Everybody's ready for the presence. All right, everybody stand. Father, I just thank you, Father, for everybody here, God. I pray that this word goes deep in their hearts, Father, that they live by it each and every day, that you just open the word, the will, and the way to their lives, Father, that you give them the green light. It's all in your timing, Father. And you give us the patience, Father, to get through those green lights, Father. Give us the patience. Give us the understanding. But most of, a, most of all, Lord, I thank you we don't ask the why any longer. Oh, thank you, we Lord. don't ask it anymore, Father, because we're going to be obedient, Father. We're going to be obedient children, Father, because I know you have lots of presents waiting for us, oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, thank you, Father, that all, oh, all we God. have to do is ask. Yes. All we have to do yes. is ask because, yes. God, you tell us you give us the desires of our heart. And Father, we just give you all the praise and glory. Yes, in the word. mighty name of Hallelujah. Jesus, we say, Amen. Amen.